Good morning everyone, it's Jean here from True Love Quilts for You. Um, today I'm going to be doing my tutorial on this quilt that I've made, which is the simplest quilt block that you'll have ever, ever constructed. Um, I've, I've done a whole, I've done, um, I would say, three quarters of the quilt. I, I didn't expound on the sashing and the border, although I showed you how I did that. I'm concentrating mostly for you beginners on how to create the block in this quilt. Um, I used this lovely, um, I'll show you pictures up close. It's, uh, it's sort of a, more of a juvenile print, as I was saying in my tutorial. It has little cowboys, um, horseshoes and cowboy boots, um, but I paired it, uh, it's interesting, I, I paired it with this border, which again, in the beginning of my tutorial, which I don't have a clue how my quilts are going to turn out, I had pulled about five different, other, five other different prints for my border, but I ended up using this large burgundy border, um, which is like a, a traditional large floral which I just really, I really liked. I thought it paired and I thought the contrast between the blocks, it picked up the burgundy of the block. All you need for this quilt are, are 42 10 inch squares. That's for the body of the quilt, 42 10 inch squares. And then I added, I don't know, you know me, what, half a yard, three quarters of a yard for the white sashing and then Again, my, I do my borders funky. I use the length of the fabric. Maybe um, like two yards for the border. I don't know. I don't know. I can't figure it out. You guys got to figure it out. And I'm sorry about that because I know you're beginners. But if you do, and I address this, if you, if you want to embark on the easiest, quickest quilt, you can actually just finish it at your blocks. So you just have this nice size throw quilt and put a binding on it if that's what you want. I'm concentrating more on how to construct the four, um, the, the, um, uh, well, seven down, yeah, the 42 blocks, how to construct it. It's a four, it's a four patch block, very, very simple. Um, I, hopefully I'm showing you how, oops, there's all threads. I'm showing you how to create the block. Um, this quilt, I backed it with um, a real contrast. I, I just wanted to pick up the blue, this lovely pretty teal blue. So I pulled from my stash this blue and red actually. I thought it looked pretty. And then I, and then I um, sort of French countryfied it up with the red and white gingham um, around the binding. Um, it, this made up with this border, which is large as you can see. This is a large border. It's about eight, it finishes about eight inches. Um, and the sashing, which was a two and a half inch uh, sashing, it finishes up a nice size quilt, probably, probably a, a decent size uh, twin size quilt. Again, um, if you just want to concentrate your beginners on the block, um, making these blocks inside here. Then if you want to put the borders on, by all means. Um, my, my, oh, I was looking at my... Um, I had done a tutorial a whole bunch of while back about um, some, some little, uh, little presents in the gift giving season. Well, it's come and gone, but I'm gonna, I think that's going to be my next tutorial. But after that in the new year, I am concentrating um, with some others interspersed, but I'm concentrating on our sampler quilt, our block of the whatever um, club, a jean quilt along, because I thought... Um, yeah, you know, I know a lot of you now have gotten, you know, the bit under your, you know, in your mouth about the basics of quilting, but maybe some of you haven't. Um, this quilt here is super easy and it's quick. Remember my coin quilt was easy, but it wasn't all that quick. This is so quick. Um, again, this is a beginner's quilt. In the new year, I'm concentrating on from square one, from your machine, to your needles, to your tools. And then I'm going to show you, hopefully pinning it, how to do it. All of the things you need so that maybe in a few months' time, you're going to, with along with me, create a, a nice size quilt. And I'll have shown you every single step of the way. I can't do that in these tutorials, a half hour, 40 minute tutorial from start to finish. I can make a quilt 
you know, in a couple days from start to finish, but I can't portray that on my videos. But in the next, in the coming new year, I will be doing that. But for now, for you guys, this quilt, this pattern is so easy. I rec would recommend it. Easy and quick. Once you get everything down pat, you get your cutting down pat. Um, as I said, don't have to put the borders on. Uh, but like, it's a very, very simple, easy quilt. Let me see if I can hold it up there for you. I took some pictures of it outside. It's so cold outside. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so there's my tutorial that's going to be attached to this um, little uh, thing right now. And I do hope you enjoy it. Um, again, easy, quick quilt for anybody. And um, I like this. I like this fabric line. I thought it was pretty. Red, my favorite color. Oh my word. Look, I even matched my top. <laughs> I'm so pathetic. <laughs> I matched my top to match my quilt. Anyway, folks, have a good day. And um, thanks again for tuning in. I appreciate it. Bye. Here I am at the beginning of my my quilt journey. I always think it's funny actually. Um, when I go to start a project, I have a vague idea of the pattern that I'm going to use, but um, as I do here, I've made this pattern before that I'm going to show you, but um, I, I, um, I've actually, <clears throat> I'm actually showing you my process. Um, and in this case, I don't have a clue. Um, I, I had bought a um, a Moda uh, layer cake, and that's a ten pack of ten inch squares, forty two ten inch squares, um, from this line. It's called Howdy by Stacy Test Hue or something like that, and it's a it's a sweet little uh, uh, perhaps a, a fairly juvenile line of fabric, little girls and florals. Um, horseshoes, that's I, the howdy. Now, um, I don't know if you realize that when you get a, um, a uh, layer cake pack, it's about two and three quarter yards of fabric. And one layer cake with some border makes about a twin size quilt. <clears throat> so if you would want to make a larger quilt, a queen size or, uh, or larger, you would have two layer cakes. Um, again, about two and three quarter yards of fabric this is, apparently. Now, what I've done is I have this. Now, I, I have the block that I'm going to be showing you, and I might or may not be adding a border. And <clears throat> since this is, let me just see what this looks like. I've sort of um, opened it up, fanned through the fabric, as it were. And what I've, I've seen is that it's creams and blues and tans, burgundies. So what I've done from my stash, oh, I like the gingham, very pretty. What I've done is, um, again, I may or may not pull um, a border fabric. I'm going to see as it as I go along. Here's a pretty, um, a pretty, it has a, a lovely classic floral. So here's a pretty rose floral. Um, that might be a bit too, maybe not, might be a bit too grown up, but maybe not because of this one. Um, or then I have this more of a patchwork looking um, uh, fa fabric here, which really does incorporate quite a lot. The tans, um, the pinks, the blues. Um, it really does qu incorporate quite a lot of the um, the colors. So I might go with that. Again, I, there's a, another pretty blue floral um, with the pink roses. Here's another smaller, uh, cutesier print. So I'm not sure. I, I, again, I just pull from my stash, as you know. But what we're going to do is we're going to start by start by doing our block. Now, it's a very, very simple block. In fact, this is a fairly quick quilt. Um, to make. What you're going to be doing is uh, you're going to be taking all of your squares, sort of scratch them together, and you're going to be cutting, you know how I do this, you're going to be cutting a three and a half inch piece off of the side. Again, to the pinked edge, I do it 
to the outermost edge on my three and a half inch line ruler. This rotary cutter has a blade underneath. So I just line this up on my board and then go along and see that my three and a half inch line um, is there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that. And then with these two piles, I'll end up with six and a half inch, six and a half inch and a three and a half inch piece pieces. Um, I'm going to place them over here. One is going to go um, up this way and the other one is I'm going to turn around. Okay? Actually, no. For right now, for right now, just leave them like that. Leave them like that. Fold like that. If you've got that. Okay? So now I'm just going to come along and I'm just going to slice all of these you're just going to end up two piles, but the piles, and we have to be very careful of how we want our piles. So I'm just going to put this pile here and this pile turned over here. And then I'm just going to, I'm just going to cut all of my fabrics and then I'll be showing you what I'm going to do with the piles. I'm over at my machine, and as you can see, we have your two piles of fabric. This pile, which is the six and a half inch cut pieces, um, are just as they came off of the package. Um, most of the manufacturers sort of um, uh, make sort of these are all sort of light colors, a few dark, but they sort of ch uh, change it up. So I quite like the um, the um, order that this uh, layer cake is in. So I've taken this pile and I've just come over here. Now this pile here is was exactly this pile just turned over. Okay, so these bits here are at the very end, or at the very back of the quilt. Do you understand, of, of the pile? Do you understand? I'm taking, I'm chain piecing these pieces um, and what I'm doing is I'm just grabbing from the from the uh, the the uh, each pile. I'm grabbing a three and a half inch and a, a six and a half inch. This is the this is the top of the pile and this is the back of the pile, as it were. So I'm just going to be putting. I'm just going to be adding these pieces onto this top. Of course, pretty sides together, the right sides together, and with a quarter inch seam. Now we've done this dozens of times, and hopefully you've been able to chain, you've been able to perfect your chain piecing. So I'm just grabbing, and you'll have had a, um, the, the pinked edge and a cut edge. I quite like to put the cut edge. Now these are the same, but when we go to slice these up, because they're not 42 different pieces of fabric. Um, they, you may have two or three of the same fabric, but it's fine because um, we're gonna be cutting them up. And this is a scrappy looking quilt. I'm gonna actually turn this around so I have, just so I can grab. I, as you know, I always like to just grab, 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 grab. So I'm just going to be grabbing my perfectly cut three and a half inch, sewing it onto my six and a half inch. I'm going to be doing that with all 42 pieces of fabric. So I've chain pieced my, my six and a half inch and my three and a half inch together. This is actually, when I think about it, this is actually one of the quickest quilts a beginner could ever make. What I'm going to do is, if you've chain pieced them, you're just going to, going to clip them apart Again, as I said, hopefully you've, you've perfected chain piecing. Just go slow, but just you're, you've just stitched that um, three and a half piece. And my, my point I forgot to mention is, um, I, I hope I didn't confuse you with the, um, the, the fabric placements. All you want to do is to have a, a very nice mixture of prints. I mean, if, 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 
if all of a sudden you get to your piles and it's like, oh my goodness, there's two of the same print. Don't, don't stress about it. Just, just grab another print. The fat, as I said, the um, layer cakes come um, in a nice variety, but there are, there are some matching, there are the same fabrics. You're not going to have 42 different fabrics. So you're going to have, like there, you're going to have two of the same, three of the same fabrics here, but I've just, I've just added a, a different piece. So when we then subcut these pieces, it'll be a nice scrappy um, quilt um, incorporating this, in the, this entire line of fabrics. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut these apart. Again, this is a, you know, sometimes I say it's, a, it's an easy quilt, but it's not a quick quilt. This is a quick quilt. Look at this. I'll have ended up with 40, because we started out with 42 blocks. I just cut them, and we end up with 42 blocks. Now what I'm going to do, how hard was that? What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my ironing board, and I'm not going to show you how because I've shown you this before. But what we do is we set our seam, we push it over, and we roll it to the, to the, we just roll that up and press that really, really nice. Now, actually, now we're going to come back and subcut it. We started out with 10 inch squares. This block here ends up 10 by 9 and a 9 and a half which is okay, um, I think, obviously, because we've cut off, we've cut this bit. So when I used to do it, somebody said, oh, it ended up a 10 inch square. I'm like, no, it hasn't. It's ended up a nine and a half inch by 10 inch square. So anyway, we're just going to be cutting, after I press all of these, we're just going to be cutting this, this way through, up through the, um, with the seam up at the top, we're going to be cutting it right in half at the far, this is 10 inches from here to here. This is nine and a half inches. That's fine. Um, we're going to be cutting it right in half at the five inch mark. Um, and then we'll put the other block together and then it's unbelievable. Um, I'll, but I'm going to go over to my ironing board and I'm going to press these and I'll be back. So I've ironed my, my, um, to get pieces together here, as you can see. And what I'm going to do on my cutting board is, um, I can do, I can, I, I'm comfortable, um, just lining my edges up since they've been so nice, um, on a, on one of my lines. And I just, I just sort of layer several of them together, especially when they're pre, when they're, um, pre-cut from the manufacturer. I find them cut really beautifully. So I just line up five or six or seven of them because that's my, my cutter can, can take that. Um, and then what I do is I'll get that out of the way. I'll just get my, my, my cutter and my ruler. And then on my five inch mark, exactly five inches across, again, to the end of the pinked edge, I'm going to put my black line, and I know this exactly where this is going to cut is five inches. So I'm just going to make sure, top and bottom, it's five inches, and hold it. You can do this with your rotary cutter and your ruler, and there you have beautiful five-inch pieces. And you're going to just end up with a pile of these five inch pieces, uh, these five inch wide pieces. Now, what we're going to do is uh, I'll just continue cutting all of these blocks and we're just going to end up. What we're going to do is this is our finished, or I don't know if it's finished or I don't know what that means. This is our block that we're going to be sewing together, okay? I've worked on this quote for about an hour and a half, if that, and I'm, I'm ready after I sew these together um, I'm ready to put my blocks together. It is a very, very simple, quick, easy quilt. And one of the lovely things that you don't have to worry about is you don't have to worry about matching up seams because um, these, this is your block. I've sewn, I've sewn one block together. Do you see? This is your five inch and five inch. The, the, this is at the top and this is at the bottom. So you literally are going to just be doing, putting the, um, sewing them together, you don't have to match up any seams. You're just 
going to be sewing top and bottom. And then literally, you can just, again, take it over to your machine and chain piece 42 of these blocks, top and bottom, no matching up seams. And then there is our block. And actually, I did measure this. This block measures nine and a half inches finished. I don't know if that's what it's supposed to be. It's nine and a half inches um, raw, raw edges here. Um, again, you know me. I don't know if it's that's supposed to, you know, it's finished or what, but that's this is my size block that I've done. And then what we're going to be doing after we've sewn these together, look, you just grab all from your pile, make a nice assortment, um, you know, pretty side to pretty side. You're going to end up with 42 of these blocks, six blocks across. You've heard me say this. That's what this will yield. Six blocks across, seven rows down. And then I probably will put a sashing and a border. Um, again, this is a very simple, simplistic quilt. Uh, a very, very good quilt for a beginner. I don't know what, what fabric I'm going to pull. I'll, I'll audition it later. But if you wanted to change it up, you could make it a little bit bigger with your, with your just one layer cake. You could put a sashing in between. Um, you could you could put a larger sa border, a larger sashing, and a large border. Um, but I'm just going to by putting the I'm just going to for for um, ease sake and just show because I like the whole scrappy look. I'm just going to be sewing these. I'm going to take these over and I'm going to chain piece my five inch pieces together, having cut them, and then I'll go and again. I'll I'll just set my seam and I'll press it over and then I can just pull my six blocks across, my seven rows down. How simple is this quilt? It really is ideal. You're not matching anything. You're not, not matching, well, the only seam you'll be matching is on your row here, but you're not matching anything here. And it's, it's delightful. It really is a nice, a nice quilt um, for you to, to, you know, to, to begin with. A very nice, easy quilt for a beginner. As you can see, I have my pile of cut pieces that I've ironed and I've um, I've cut into my five-inch wide squares, five-inch wide rectangles, and and all I'm doing, as I said, I've worked on this quilt just for an hour a bit. All I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to pull from my piles here a nice mixture of prints. And the top goes up here, and the, this seam goes down here. I'm just going to match them up. They've been cut beautifully and sewn. And with my quarter inch foot, I'm just going to chain piece them. And I'll just continue doing that until make a, get a nice, nice assortment yeah, like that. Get a nice assortment of mixtures of prints. Um, pretty side to pretty side, quarter inch seam. I'm just going to continue doing this until I have 42 of our blocks. Um, here they are. I'll just cut my chains apart and I'll have 42 of these blocks. Amazing. So quick. I've um, sewn my blocks together my five inch squares to make my final block and here it is and now what I'm going to be doing is just like I did before the next step is just to cut my chains apart made a bit of a mess here <laughs> I don't know where I began or start um, just cut my chains apart go over to my ironing board and I'm going to just again set my seam here and then roll it up and we have this block. This actually reminds me, if you've been following along, we, this reminds me of the coin quilt that we've just made. Um, but we, that was a little bit more precise quilting um, it, because basically it ends up with a, a, a sort of a wonky four patch block. Um, and and that's what that's what this is. It's just a, it's just a very simple four patch that we're going to be putting together. Um, but this is a, this is this way is so much easier. And as I I was looking at this um, 
and I was think I was showing you how to put the blocks together, and you could uh, once they're, they're all the same size, you could uh, you know put together th th this top piece here with the bottom and, and just go along like that, or you could make it a little bit different. They're the same size, so you could change it up, and you could do you could put it this way and have this block going this way and may, and then maybe the next block if you can see that this block is going here so you could change this this quilt up and and like this the, so every other block is going a different way so i think i like it this way actually it's a little bit scrappier so you just have to keep keep um uh you know track of the scrappiness so we have this every other block this side this way this way and then this is going up and this is going up so i quite like that it'll really make a scrappy looking quilt um so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna iron these i'm gonna uh, cut them all apart and then um go over to my ironing board and then i'll just start i'll just start messing about with my six rows down my six blocks across and my seven rows down and um, I think I'm going to put it in that configuration. Yeah, I quite like that. So that will be my next and almost my final, um, my final bit of this very, very quick quilt. I've sewn all of my blocks together and I've made my quilt top. Remember, I, I was sewing my six blocks together. And then, and then making my seven rows, and then I've attached my, my, all my rows together. So now what I'm going to do is I thought, to make my quilt a little bit bigger, I'm going to be making a, um, a sashing, um, a, a, a small, not a sashing, a small, a small cream colored border. And then, remember all of the, the um, quilt, the, uh, the um, fabrics that I, I pulled? the blues and the, the pinks. Actually, I like this one. I, I just pulled this. It's like this burgundy, um, this burgundy floral. I really like that. Even though this is more of a juvenile print and this is really sort of elegant, I just think it, um, it, it just brings it up to more of a, so, not, so it's not such a baby quilt as it were. I really like that. So I'm gonna be cutting these as borders. Um, but right now I'm going to be cutting my, my, um, cream. I just bought some cream fabric and I think what I'm going to do, you can use any, any, any size when you're doing this to make your quilt bigger. You could do this, you could do this, um, a, 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 an inch and a half just to have a little bit of a break or you could do it four inches and do this eight inches. I don't, I don't care. Like, but what I think will, will look nice on this size quilt, I'm going to cut this border um, I think I'll cut this one at two and a half. So yeah, I think I'll cut this one at two and a half. I've, I've, um, I've done my, um, I've measured around and I'm going to need eight. I don't need quite eight, but I, just to err on the cautious side, I need eight, two and a half inch. Actually, you could, if you have, um, two and a half inch strips hanging around, you could use your two and a half inch strips. To make to make this so there's one two three four and then i'll just keep cutting them and what i'm going to do is i'm going to i'm going to um i'm going to uh attach them or, or on the bias what you do when you're doing your your um your your uh borders you you here's your so to make a continuous continu to make a continuous strip so you do the sides and then the top. You do this. You sew down that diagonal there. And then when that's sewn, having trimmed it off, you have a continuous strip to put on your side and your top borders. And that's what I'm going to do now. Um, I have to apologize. Oops, 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 oops. I have to apologize um, to you guys. I got carried away. <laughs> And I, I did my, I did my inner border, my two and a half inch, and then I was, I started my, um, my outside border. Um, and at this point, I really have to apologize to the beginners who were following along with me. Um, 
because I don't do things conventionally and I, I think you might want to, I don't, I don't know, you either want to uh, not learn from me how to do this or do it like I do, but I've been doing this forever. Um, so from this point on, I'm just going to do what I do, um, and I'll show you what I mean. I I have I have this board, this fabric that I had gotten. I got about five yards of it, and you don't need five yards of fabric to do a border. You don't. You only need um, I don't know a, a yard and a half, two yards. Now. The reason I'm saying I got I had five yards that I pulled from my stash from from ages ago. I've made this border very wide. The reason being, if you can see, it has a directional floral rose print, and I really like that. I didn't want to cut it off, you know, halfway along. The beauty of this large print fabric, or large patterned fabric, is that is that floral. And actually, I've done something, usually when I would use a directional print, it, again, it's not for beginners, I would cut my fabric, um, I would cut my fabric, which I didn't do this time, I would cut my fabric this way, from selvage to selvage, so I would get the print going the same way at the top. I'm okay with that because, you know, even, even with the print going this way, it's, it, it, it'll sort of be, it'll be okay. I don't know if that makes any sense. Anyway, I've put on my two side borders for this quilt. It's turned out a really nice large quilt. And those borders are eight and a half inches, which I think are, I think it's super. A border is a fantastic way to make a quilt big, whether you want to make a quilt big or small. This is a, a, a nice larger throw size. To this point, you could just border that, you could just bind it. You don't have to do all this. You could have just finished your quilt right there. And with a nice, look at that, with a nice little binding and made a sweet quilt. I, I don't mind working with larger quilts myself. Um, I'm used to it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you. <laughs> I've put on these two eight and a half inch borders from my yardage, see how oh, my yardage. And what I've done is I, I've isolated the actual design if you can see, here is my design, and here is my design, and I've gotten I've gotten the full the full floral. If you can see that, I'm going from this floral point. I've gotten the full floral, so I'm going to go this this quilt. This is a, a about uh, about eight and three quarter inches. So what I do is from this point, I want to, I want to encapsulate this, this piece of fabric here. What I do, again, I don't know, this is how I do it. I go my eight and say three quarters at this end here. Let me get rid of this. I go my eight and three quarters, or nine, whatever. And um, I make a cut right there and now I know I know that this length is it's a it's a very good fabric I know you're gonna die here this is what I do this way I can have a continuous I can have a continuous border I don't have to put I don't have to put um a, a seam in it in my fabric and then I'll, I'll fold this back and I'll just put that back in my stash. And I can either use that for another border. But you see here, so this will be my top and my bottom border. So coming over to my, coming over to my, my, my uh, quilt here. So I'll take all of this. See, there's no seam. And again, you might think, well, that's just, I, I don't, I don't want to spend, I don't want to buy five yards of fabric. By all means, don't, 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 don't. But this is, this is what I do. Um, now, see, I think that, even though it's directional, I think that's sort of, it should be going to my, oh, no, 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 because I like that rose going up. Yeah, I like that rose going up. So then I sort of try to not match it, it doesn't match, but look. This bunch of leaves sort of matches there. So I'll have my, my bunches of flowers going right across um, my, 
the top of my quilt and the bottom of my quilt. And I have enough in that length to do the top and the bottom with no seams. So again, folks, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, just finish my quilt up. Um, my next video that's coming up or my next few videos are from very, 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 very beginning. Remember our block of the whatever club? Um, and it's going to be, I'm going to show you exactly what to do, where to do, how to pin everything for beginner beginners. But this is how I'm going to do this. This is how I'm going to finish my quilt. And you'll have seen the finished quilt. So on with my borders.